Maybe we're a day late in covering this. Maybe it's fine. Who really knows? We'll know by the time the video is public on YouTube if I'm out to lunch by uploading it on this day, but what I wanted to do was go over an idea that has been talked about endlessly by Toronto Maple Leafs media, fans, and writers. Because when it comes to one of the guys that still needs a contract on the Maple Leafs, it is my fellow Filipino by blood, Nick Robertson. And the latest in Robertson's overall situation in Toronto is not good if you're going out there and trying to project him as a potential Leaf. You see, Nick Robertson hasn't really had his fair share of opportunity with the Toronto Maple Leafs, at least in the capacity that he potentially deserves. Now, sure, he had a 50, what, 56 game campaign last year, 27 points, 14 goals, and he had zero points in six games in the playoffs in the first round for Toronto. But when you think about Nick Robertson, you think about the way he's used, you think about the way he's placed in the lineup. With all the reports coming out about Nick Robertson wanting more of an opportunity, how he feels like he might not get that in Toronto, and how he's adamant that he wants a new start, it doesn't really take a genius to say, okay, I kind of get where he's coming from here. And with the Nick Robertson train picking up steam the past few days here in regards to a potential trade, the conversation gets even more interesting when we dive into this article published by Dan Kanierski from two days ago. Penguins Q&A, this is what a Nick Robertson trade would look like. Now, the article goes out there and talks about, of course, the trade aspect of Nick Robertson. It goes over a few other questions and answers. It's a Q&A article. What do you expect? They talk about Rector McGroarty. They talk about a bunch of other dudes. And then the article goes out there and brings up a question from Drizzy. Hey, Dan, what would Toronto want for Robertson? I've been kicking around Eller and a pick with Timmins and Robertson. Throw in a Poulin or a Pustinen or a depth defenseman. This is what Kanierski goes out there and writes about. It's a really long one here, but I do think this is great to look at if you're a Toronto Maple Leafs fan or a Penguins fan, just kind of getting the scoop as to what's going on. We can confirm that Kyle Dubas really likes Nick Robertson. That should chum the waters just a little more. We wrote back in May that Robertson should be high on Kyle Dubas' target list. Ahem, first. Both Pittsburgh Hockey Now and Kyle Dubas were present in the 2020 bubble playoffs. In the training camp leading up to the tournament, Robertson set tongues wagging. Oh, that's a, that's a really interesting verb to use there, tongues wagging. Toronto was ready to build statues of the then 18-year-old who was a mere second-round pick. He's not a big guy, but he's got it. GMing 101. Let's start with the basics. Like Dylan Holloway, whom the St. Louis Blues swiped from the Oilers via an offer sheet two weeks ago, Robertson is an unproven commodity with loads of talent but a delayed progression. His salary range is about $2 million, which puts his offer sheet value at a third-round pick. However, Robertson, as a left wing, was blocked and didn't always seize the day. He groused a bit last season, which has culminated in the current standoff between him and the Maple Leafs organization. Robertson is an RFA, so the acquisition has two paths. The Penguins can offer sheet him. Anything below $2.29 million will cost the offering team a third rounder. Here's where it gets tricky. Toronto only has 12 forwards in the NHL roster and $1.25 million in cap space, including Robertson, but they have no obvious place to trim the fat. The team is top-heavy up front and on the blue line. To make things even more fun, Toronto is sitting on Easton Cowan and Fraser Minton. Minton Fraser? Huh, it's interesting how it says that there. A pair of U21 prospects who surely look ready. So, with all this in mind, I mean, Kanierski is setting up the context really well here. What's going on in Toronto? What options do the Pittsburgh Penguins have? Plus, acknowledging the fact that Kyle Dubas really, really likes this dude, which should not be surprised in the slightest because, um... Yeah, he kind of drafted the guy, and he was kind of there the whole way through when Robertson had that explosion of talent in the playoffs a few years ago. That's when everybody really wanted him, right? So, here's how it works. The Penguins have about $2 million when paired to 13 forwards, but the Penguins do have 19 forwards who could, with some level of competence, play in the NHL. Our industry sources in Toronto believe that Toronto GM Brad Trilliving would match a $2.29 million offer in order to effect a better trade. So let's think outside of the box a little bit. 
Let's say Dubas sends someone off his roster, such as Cody Glass, with 50% salary retained to Toronto for future considerations, and then they offer Sheet Robertson, who agrees to about a $2 million deal. Toronto accepts the trade and declines to match, thus also receiving the Penguins' 2025 third. It's similar to St. Louis quietly trading a second-tier player to Edmonton when they declined to match the offers for Holloway and Broberg. Dubas could buy off Toronto with a backdoor trade. Now, that is such a 3D chess, 4D reality kind of maneuver there that I honestly am pretty surprised. Like, that's a really intricate way to go out there and disguise what would essentially be a Nick Robertson offer sheet by giving the Toronto Maple Leafs some extra value to not match. Hey, take Cody Glass, a guy whom we just acquired here in Pittsburgh, at 50% salary retained, so you'll get the player, and then we'll offer Sheet Robertson, you won't match it, you'll take the third round pick compensation, we get our guy, you get a guy, and a pick, everybody's happy, Robertson gets a better chance to play in Pittsburgh. Capiche? And it's honestly a crazy enough idea that I think it could work. Now, I do kind of feel for Cody Glass in this situation. He's just one name that was thrown into this conversation. It doesn't have to be Cody Glass, but if it is Cody Glass, the fact that Cody Glass was just recently acquired by the Pittsburgh Penguins in the first place, he was kind of crucified on social media, and then he replied back to some of the hater comments. Like, the fact that that went down, and now we're talking about trading him again... That's kind of, eh, I feel kind of bad for the guy at this point. But hey, if he goes from Pittsburgh to Toronto, he's going to a better team. Straight up. I mean, nobody's really saying that Pittsburgh is going to have a better season than Toronto in 2024-2025. So for Cody Glass, this might actually be good for him to get back into a winning environment. And if he plays all the games, then he could be getting back up to speed. Maybe he'll never be in that same echelon of player that he was supposed to be in when he was drafted around Gabe Velarde and Casey Middlestad and Elias Pettersson in the 2017 NHL entry draft, but he can be serviceable enough to still hold some value. And for Nick Robertson and the Pittsburgh Penguins, if this is a link that ends up happening, obviously I would love to see Nick Robertson play with Sidney Crosby. We know what that guy can do when he plays with the most random wingers out there. He doesn't need a superstar on his left and right side. All he needs is a Chris Kunitz. All he needs is a Brian Rust. All he needs is a Connor Sherry. All he needs, maybe, is a Nick Robertson. Who really knows? So, Kyle Dubas, you want to get your smart brain going up there and chugging along the tracks once again to try to make this thing go through, either via an offer sheet or with an offer sheet and a trade attached to it? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the idea of a Nick Robertson offer sheet from Kyle Dubas and the Pittsburgh Penguins. If Toronto goes out there and decides that they need to get some extra stuff to not match some sort of an offer, what do you think that should be? Do you like this idea here of Cody Glass's name? being thrown into those conversations, or do you think there's somebody else that should probably be talked about instead? Bunch of options here, of course, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this Robertson Pittsburgh idea. I hope you enjoyed this video, Ash Rolls 99, and bye. <laughs>